Okay, this is going to be a short video to show how you can use the shuttle sort algorithm to sort a list of numbers into ascending order. In terms of the shuttle sort algorithm, it's pretty straightforward. We're just going to do this example with a list of five numbers, and we're going to do several passes through the list. The first pass, we're just going to compare the first and second numbers in the list, and if the first is bigger than the second, we're going to swap them over. On the second pass, we're going to start with the second and third numbers, and if the second's bigger than the third, we we'll swap them over if necessary, and then if we do a swap, we we'll then compare the second, the first, and swap if necessary. And then with the third pass, we start by looking at third and fourth numbers, if necessary, swap them over, and so on back down the list, comparing the second and third, and the first and the second. Um, so in terms of its shuttle sort, because we can't keep on going back and forth, and it's essentially just like a shuttle run. Okay, so if we get stuck in and apply the algorithm, so we can do the first pass on the list of numbers 10, 2, 7, 3, 5, and the first pass is pretty straightforward, because all we do is we compare the first and second numbers in the list, which is 10 and 2. 10 is bigger than 2, so we swap them over, and I'll just do the kind of cross to show that they're swapping places. So the 2 goes there, 10 goes there, I'm not going to do anything with the rest of the list, but I'll just fill the rest of the numbers in the boxes for completeness. So at the end of the first pass, I'm going to tally up what we've done at the bottom. Um, we've obviously done one comparison, which is what we did there. And we did one swap, because I got one cross. OK, so that's the, that's the first pass. Now we're going to move on to the second pass. So what I've done is I've just rewritten the list of numbers as they were at the end of the first pass. Now in terms of the second pass of the shuttle sort algorithm, I start this time with the second and third numbers in the list. Now 10 is bigger than 7, so I obviously swap those two over. And I'm just filling in the rest of the list here. And then because... Um, we've compared the second and third numbers and swapped them over, I then go work back down the list and compare the numbers 2 and 7. Now 7 is bigger than 2, so I don't actually need to do a swap. So I just fill the rest of the list in for completeness. And just like I did before, at the end of each pass, I'm interested in the number of comparisons and swaps that I've done. So on this occasion, I did two comparisons. That's where I had the circles, and I did one swap where I had the cross. OK, so at the end of the second past, pass, the list of numbers that I'm working with is 2, 7, 10, 3, 5. And now I'm going to do a third pass, and I'm going to start by comparing the 10 and 3 this time, which are in the third and fourth place. So again, I've rewritten the list of numbers as they were at the end of the second pass. And start the third pass, I compare the numbers in positions 3 and 4. Now 10 is bigger than 3, so I'll do my crosses to indicate I'm swapping. 3, 10. And I just fill in the rest of the numbers in boxes for completeness. Now I started by comparing the numbers in positions 3 and 4. Now I start working back down the list, and I compare the 7 and the 3. And, OK, the 7 is bigger than 3, so I swap so I swap that pair over. And just write those in. And fill in the rest for completeness. So I started by comparing positions 3 and 4, then compare positions 2 and 3, and now I just compare positions 1 and 2. And obviously 3 is bigger than 2, so there is no need to swap on this occasion. Um, as before, I need to count up the number of comparisons and swaps. So there's 1, 2, 3 comparisons. And number of swaps, I'd need to track down how many crosses there were. 
So three comparisons and two swaps. Now I'm going to get ready for the final pass and I'm going to be working with a list of numbers 2, 3, 7, 10 and 5. I'm going to do a final pass through the list. Okay, so here we are um, with the numbers as they were at the end of the third pass, 2, 3, 7, 10 and 5. Now for the fourth pass I start by comparing the numbers in positions 4 and 5. Um, so 10 is bigger than 5, so I swap over and I fill in the rest of the numbers for completeness. So I started by comparing positions 4 and 5, now I compare positions 3 and 4, and obviously 7 is bigger than 5, so I swap over and I do the crosses to indicate I've done that, fill in the rest of the list for completeness. Now I compare positions 2 and 3, which is what I'm doing, Ah, now in this case 5 is bigger than 3, so there's no need to go any further. So I can actually here, if I write it down, stop the algorithm. As always, I'm going to be interested in how many comparisons and swaps I did. So count up, I did 1, 2, 3 comparisons, and I've done 2 swaps. So I've actually sorted the list of numbers now um, properly into ascending order and you can see the final answer. If I circle it there, the final answer was 2, 3, 5, 7, 10 is the sorted list of numbers. When I run an algorithm, be it the bubble sort or the shuttle sort, I'm going to be interested in how many comparisons and swaps I did on each pass. And I've just tabulated this information here. Um, so you can see on the first pass it was one comparison, one swap. Second pass, two comparisons and one swap. Third pass, three comparisons and two swaps. Fourth pass, three comparisons, two swaps. And then I've done the sigmas at the bottom. Total number of comparisons was six. Um, total number of swaps. Total number of comparisons was 9, sorry, um, total number of swaps was 6. And this type of information is really useful when you're comparing the efficiency of an algorithm. So at this stage, you might like either to rewind the video or pause the video. Um, I've just put a little exercise in for you. Um, I've given you a list of five numbers, 34, 30, 25, 27, 33. And it'd be interesting to have a go and see if you can shuttle sort these numbers into order yourself and produce your own table of summary information showing the number of comparisons and the number of swaps. And finally, I hope you found this um, video on the shuttle sort algorithm of use. If there's any questions or problems or any queries, don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you very much.